Dave Thompson with Behind the Lines, the Civil War Monitor's video interview series. Today I'm joined by Keith Harris, who is the host of Cosmic America, a Civil War multimedia network. Keith, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me today. It's nice to be here. The internet and all its wonders uh, has finally extended into the Civil War community with what you and so many others do, but I wonder if you could share with us a little bit what Cosmic America really is about and kind of what you envision it to be. Okay, well, I started this blog a couple of years ago, um, sort of out of the frustrations of uh, postgraduate uh, not publishing at, at, at this current time uh, type of situation that I'm sure many people just out of graduate school are experiencing while we're revising our dissertations and trying to turn them into books. I wanted some sort of an outlet where I could just uh, share my thoughts um, with the public, the general public, not just with other academics. And I used Cosmic America as a way to ask questions. Um, ask questions and uh, sort of present some things that I've been working on in ways that allow me to engage with an informed public. And there are there, there are so many people out there in the world who are not necessarily academics but are very uh, deeply immersed in Civil War history and very knowledgeable. And uh, I extend sort of uh, extend my thoughts and I extend my research to these people in hopes that I will speak with them and we can work out some problems and. Uh, questions and riddles together. And that's what Cosmic America is about. Uh, generally speaking, I also use it as a way to just sort of say what's on my mind for the day. If I come across something fun that um, I think people will also enjoy, I put that up there. So there's an entertainment component to it as well, and, and, and also uh, um, an intellectual component. How do you think we can try and bridge this gap a little bit between the academics and their ivory towers and this general public? Um, are, there, are there specific things that academics can do? Are there things that the general public should be trying to do to reach out towards academics? Is this somewhere we need to meet in the middle? Or do you see somebody shouldering more of the responsibility here? Well, I think it's a, it's a, great, it's a great question and it's a great topic that we can spend. We can write books on this and, and discuss how the, the, the general public and informed general public and academics can get together. There's, in the blogosphere, there is this sort of uh, um, disconnect, I think, between academics and and, and the you might want to call them enthusiasts, civil war enthusiasts with a, with a broad uh, knowledge base. There's a disconnect between popular history, if you want to call it that, and academic history. And I think that um, people sort of cordon themselves off and side with one camp or the other. And I think that's probably the biggest mistake um, that, that, that's going on right now. That. I think I believe that the people who actually do that, and, and there are a number of them out there, I think those people are, are, are really missing the point on both sides. And I think it's important for academics and the public to get together and meet in the middle. And I think that blogging is, is blogging and, and, and the internet, I suppose, is the perfect way to do that, a way to exchange ideas. And that's what I think is really going on. Specifically, um, there are there's going to be people in the world who are just going to resist uh, this innovative uh, medium is with all of their hearts, and to those people, I, I wish you well. Um, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to choose my battles, I suppose, and I'm not going to work on you too much. But there are people who are, are willing to, to, to look into what's going on here, embrace it uh, to a certain degree, and it's really sort of a, a trial by fire. And we're this is a, a you know, very young medium, and we're, we're sort of in its um, infancy right now, I suppose. So we're we're all trying things and seeing what happens and what clicks. And I'm very pleased to say that as I go through the years and, and through the months and, and try out new things and I'm making new connections and, and, uh, and I think we're really getting somewhere. And we've reached a point where, and I, and I, like, to, I like to think of the internet as a humanities accelerant um, where academics can take research that they have done that morning, put it in some form on the internet and get uh, interaction with people by the end of the day. Um, and, in this way, we can really advance learning, which is why we are all really involved in that. Yeah, I, I certainly um, I know what you're saying when you say that there are certain individuals, perhaps within the academy, who may be a little skeptical. Um, and on the other, on the other side as well, there's, yeah. there's certain people in the, in the general public who are skeptical of academics and don't want anything to do with it. 
And for those that are on the fence about the digital humanities, are there things that, you know, it's great that somebody could go on and read someone else's blog, but are there certain things that uh, certain people can do, uh, just little things that over time will help them kind of enter into that digital humanities space? You've kind of spoken to a couple of them already, but are there other things that you think of that are really great launching points for people? Sure. You, you roll up your sleeves and jump in, and you don't have to start off with uh, gangbusters. You just make comments on uh, make comments on blogs, make comments on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, these are the things that will get you involved, and as, and as that grows and grows, then you become more and more involved in the community, and, and then it becomes second nature to you. Yeah, I know it's, it was interesting because I re I'm not a technological person, and it's funny because I, I use so much technology in what I do, I, I really consider myself um, a little bit behind the curve when it comes to this. I mean, there are seven-year-olds that can figure out how to do stuff. It takes me weeks to figure out. And, uh, but once I do, you know, I, I, I think it's the most wonderful thing in the world. And I, and I started just by uh, creating a Facebook page, really, and just talking to people. And as it grew and it grew, and now, now I'm, somehow I managed to, to get myself into a position where, you know, uh, people turn to me and ask me questions. And do you think kind of the sesquicentennial right now, is this really just prime opportunity for people to really try and jump into it while, you know, interest certainly in the war, which is always, you know, sure. it's been high certainly for the past 20 years or so, in the post-Ken Burns era, but during the sesquicentennial itself, do you think that this is some, an opportunity people really shouldn't miss? Yeah, I, I, I do uh, absolutely feel that way. I mean, the Civil War is one of those things that people are always going to be interested in. It's, you know, it's, it's a great American story. Um, really, and it's it's a very compelling story with a great cast of characters, and you know it's it's, it's got everything that one would want for just to, to, to maintain your interest. But while the sesquicentennial is going on, there's been a lot of events that are putting in people's faces, um, celebratory events, commemorative events, controversial events uh, with issues um, concerning slavery, with issues concerning. Uh, display of the Confederate flag in various places, and, and, and these types of things that are in the news, and uh, it's piquing people's interests right now, and I believe that this is a, a great time to get involved in the, in, in the Civil War community writ large, as it were, on the internet. Now, with Cosmic America, for your uh, religious readers like myself, you uh, hint occasionally about projects down the line that you're going to be sharing with us. Do you think with our viewers today on Behind the Lines, you might be able to uh, give us a little sneak peek into something that you're working on? Sure. And the people have been trying to pry this out of me now for, uh, for a couple of months. So I'm going to give you the exclusive. I am working now on uh, a video series, which is essentially a Civil War lecture series, which would be my... Uh, my classroom Civil War lecture, but it's not uh, a classroom format. I'm going to combine elements of documentary and uh, in, in documentary and lecture, and into a video series between 30 and 40 videos that I'm, I'm, I'm currently in, 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 the, in the process in the throes of writing right now. That if I can figure it out, and I've got some uh, some I made some good inroads in it already, but figure out a way to make it a little more on the interactive. Side. So people can watch a video and then access documents um, through clicking links within, uh, within a particular page for each video and ask questions and make it interactive so it, it reaches a broader community um, and, and, and gets people thinking about the Civil War and some of the main issues about the Civil War. And of course I'm not going to stop with that, I'll go into other other areas as well. The first one is going to be a Civil War, and I expect that to be ready uh, for launch within the next few months, hopefully. Well, that will be great. That's kind of taking it to the next level. We do have some lectures out there, obviously the audio, but to take it to that next level, to make them interactive, I think is really going to resonate with folks. Uh, it's just something that nobody else really does. Um, so I know I will at least very much be looking forward to that. Um, would you mind sharing with us... Um, I mean, obviously, you have to stay up on the blogosphere as well, not just because you're writing it, but because you love it. Are there any uh, blogs out there that our viewers should really pay attention to? You think it's just some really top-notch quality stuff out there? Yeah, there's a few uh, excellent ones. Um, of course, Kevin Levin, Civil War Memory, and Brooks Simpson's Crossroads are ones that I read religiously every day. They're, um, they keep up to date on some of the controversial aspects of Civil War commemorations that are going on right now, and there's always some great analytical stuff 
on both of those blogs. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Andy Hall has a blog called Lake Confederates that I think is absolutely first rate. Um, one that everyone should take a look at. Uh, Harry Smeltzer's uh, Bull Runnings, Craig Swain's To the Sound of the Guns on Artillery Pieces and Ordnance is an outstanding blog. One I really like to specifically mention is, is run through the Civil War Institute at Gettysburg College. It's a collection of students who put their original research on the Gettysburg Battle and Battlefield online on a pretty regular basis. It's called 901 Stories from Gettysburg. Um, it's, uh, it's outstanding. It's, it's, it's young and they're, and they're working through some issues right now that, and sort of tweaking it to perfect it, but right now in its, its early stages, it's, it's really good, and I see that blog is, is going is going places too. It's a great blog for original research, and I really love that. Well, and, and Pete's a friend of ours here on Behind the Lines, so he did one of our first interviews with us. Good. So uh, we think very highly of the Civil War Institute here, and obviously you were a part of that this year. Um, can you give us just a little bit of your reactions from the panel that you held there for those that maybe weren't there to actually witness it firsthand? Uh, the blogging panel was outstanding, and I was surprised. Uh, the demographic of the Civil War Institute attendees is um, a little older than than, your, than 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 people might might expect, and it, there was questions of whether or not that the internet they were necessarily um, internet friendly, and it turns out that they were, and all very active bloggers and had some outstanding questions. We got into some very good talks about uh, ways that we can legitimize blogging in, in, in the academy and. Uh, various things like that, and it was, uh, it, was it was really nicely done, and, and, and I was uh, very pleased with uh, the panel that we did on blogging. And for our viewers, uh, I'm sure some of them are a little curious, because this is kind of a roundabout way of getting at history. It's a great way of doing it, though. Um, but what first inspired you to get into studying the Civil War? Oh, <laughs> Well, yeah, I think my story is pretty typical, really. Um, I, uh, I grew up in Southern California, but I'm originally from Alabama, and I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. I know this, this probably resonates with a lot of people. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents when I was a little kid, and what do grandparents do? They, they, you know, uh, they, they tell you stories. And, uh, my grandfather worked for U.S. Steel, and he used to take me around uh, in Alabama and show me all uh, the old blast furnaces uh, and, 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 and things like that around, uh, around Birmingham. We would go to this place called Tanny Hill, uh, which was a munitions and uh, ordnance manufacturing in, in central Alabama. And they had the old blast furnaces there um, from the Confederate blast furnaces. And they were ruins when I went there with a the kid. They've since been restored. But he, we used to go there all the time, and he would talk about making steel. Make a long story short, uh, it really piqued my interest in the Civil War because that was a Confederate blast furnace. And so I started asking questions about that. Turns out, uh, my family had a number of ancestors who fought with Alabama and with Georgia units. And of course, I wanted to know about these people. So the, the stories, of course, were of the romantic notion. I mean, these are the kind of family stories where we sit around and spin yarns. And I don't know how accurate they all were. But uh, accuracy aside, they at least inspired me to look further into the history of it. And I started reading Bruce Catton books when I was very young. And my grandparents, of course, bought me all these books, and, and they were some of my favorites uh, when I started out. And, it, and it just, it, it, I thought that the issues, um, even at a, at a really early age, were so compelling that it just inspired me to read more and more and more until eventually I was, I was hooked. And I have been all my, my life. And should our viewers be expecting something of yours on the bookshelves anytime soon? But hopefully, yeah. I've, uh, I've um, written a manuscript that is in um, its last stages of revision right now. It's under review with UNC Press. It's called Across the Bloody Chasm, uh, Reconciliation in the Wake of Civil War. It is about Civil War veterans, how they commemorated um, and celebrated the Civil War in the probably beginning you know, in the 1870s, 1880s, early into the 20th century. Um, it is about reconciliation on sectional terms, and I'm going to leave it at that and surprise you when you read it, because it's a complicated story, um, much more complicated than, than what, a, what the consensus about reconciliation is. Well, I certainly will look forward to it, and I think many of our viewers will as well. Obviously, memory studies are huge right now, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, really, sky's the limit, and a lot of great stuff coming out and a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline, and certainly yours is one that's among them. Uh, being a recent grad student, 
Uh, do you have any piece of advice for uh, current grad students? We have many current grad students who, who do watch the interviews. So if there's anything that you could uh, shed some light on for folks, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Advice for current, grad, current graduate students. Um, look for ways to expand your horizons. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a tricky, it's a tricky world out there right now for current grad students who are about to go into, about to go into the job market. Just look for other ways to do things. I mean, I'm not, I'm not discouraging you from going on the job market at all. I'm just, I'm just letting you know from personal experience that it is a, uh, not the most welcoming environment. Uh, it doesn't mean that you know something will come up, but my advice would be to just see what you can do to just make it more than just about that and enjoy yourself. Really, I mean, you, what you're doing is learning something that's, you know, you'll be able to share with. With, with posterity and make that something that's uh, life fulfilling and life affirming. You can kind of say it on you here, but this, there's more to it than just the, just the than just the end game. You know, experience it and be part of the journey. Of the of the well, Keith, thank you so much for joining us uh, again, everybody. That's Keith Harris with Cosmic America. It's CosmicAmerica.com. Uh, I recommend it to everybody. I check it every day, probably multiple times a day, uh, and it's simply one of, one of the best things out there in terms of uh, resources online, uh, and, and Keith will really get you thinking. So, Keith, thanks again. You're welcome, Dave. Uh, for having me. And uh, hopefully we can have you on again sometime, perhaps talk about the book or new, new developments with Cosmic America. Uh, thanks again, Keith, and uh, we'll see you all again soon.